Welcome to Prayer Storm TV. We're in the middle of a series at the moment around the Nazarite vow and the Nazarite challenge. And the next three episodes, we're gonna be talking about the three key vows that a Nazarite has to take that's outlined in the Bible in Numbers chapter six. And we're gonna look at what those mean to us as New Testament Christians. Now, the first one that we're looking at is that Nazarites were not allowed to even touch grapes or raisins or wine vinegar, but especially they were not allowed to drink wine. So James, founder of Prayer Storm, experienced <laughs> Nazarite vow <Please>. taker. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> How do we interpret and apply the Nazarite vow of not touching any grapes yeah. into our lives today? I think one of the ways of looking at the whole idea of not touching grapes is uh, uh, legitimate pleasures, because grapes represent pleasure, things, you know, you make wine from grapes, you know, we've talked about how Jesus turned, you know, uh, water into wine, and, you know, you know and wine was a, something you used to celebrate, you know. So grapes, not touching grapes, actually speaks of letting go of legitimate pleasures of this world for the purpose of experiencing eternal pleasures in knowing God. That's the way I, I, I look at the concept of uh, not touching grapes. I also think of Hebrews where it says, you know, let us lay aside the sin and the weight that so easily besets us. Because I think of it this way, every sin is a weight, but not every weight is a sin. So there's some things that actually, they're, they're not sin, but they just slow us down in our pursuit of God. We know the sins that God's, you know, convicting us about letting go of. We're not talking about sins now, we're talking about weights, distractions, things that just take up our time, energy, and all of that. And many times I find in my life, God has used some of those things in my life to get me to a place of focus by calling me to let go of them. So when I think of grapes, I think of letting go of those legitimate pleasures. That's really powerful. One of the amazing things about grapes is actually they're like one of the sugariest fruits out there. But what's also interesting is the Nazarites can eat dates, they can eat figs, they can eat other sugary things, but not grapes. And I think one of the significant reasons behind that is that wine isn't just pleasurable, but it can intoxicate you. Mm. And what do we mean by intoxication? It means you don't see straight. Mm. It means that you don't make wise yeah. decisions. That's why a policeman will pull you over if you've had a certain amount of wine and you're driving, because he says, you're not in a position to make the best decisions at this point. And it's so true that there's nothing wrong with watching a TV episode. There's nothing wrong with having a Facebook account. But some of these legitimate pleasures can start to intoxicate us and affect our thinking. Whereas the Bible says, be transformed. How? By the renewing yeah. of your mind. And part of that is getting rid of even like a, a spirit of entertainment, yeah. where you've got to be entertained the whole time. You've got to be connected online the whole time. Or you've got to be, I remember one of my vows that I did, and James will remember this, I didn't watch football for a whole year. Right. And that just helped bring something that's a legitimate pleasure, totally right, especially when you support the best football team in the world. <laughs> Absolutely fine. But it helped me to not get sad or yeah. overly happy necessarily when we won anything. And, and the point is that these fasts help bring legitimate pleasures into alignment yeah. and stops it, deto um, detoxes you from any intoxication that can affect your thinking and your yeah. reasoning. Yeah, I, I think our generation is drunk on entertainment. You know, the Bible says, do not be drunk on wine. And yes, that's a saying, and we should not be drunk on wine. However, you may not be getting drunk on wine, but are you drunk in other ways where, you know, we're constantly on Instagram, constantly on social media, constantly on Facebook, constantly watching movies, or just taking in lots of the junk of the world. So our whole internal dialogue is filled with all these voices from the world. And actually God is wanting us to be, yeah, you said the word detox, wanting us to be detoxed from all of that. And I believe this is one of the ways God gets us to be sharper, is letting go of these legitimate legitimate pleasures so that our spiritual discernment is a lot more focused. My experience is when I've let go of some of these things in my life, I have found more focus in my prayer. I have found that I've been more effective, you know, when I step out to do things God's called me to do. So it's so important that we learn to let go of these legitimate pleasures. I think that's so cool and so key. And another thing that's really important about the grapes is all the way through the Bible, and this is lost a little bit on the modern mind, but in the ancient mind, even to the Romans and the Greek, 
all the way through the ancient world, grapes represented fruitfulness. Mm. What did they bring back from the promised land? Grapes. What was the first thing Noah planted when everything had been destroyed by the flood? It was a vineyard. And grapes represent fruitfulness. And actually, one of the amazing things that Jesus talks about when he talks about how to be a fruitful disciple is he says, sometimes God will prune you. Because if you want really fruitful grapes, that's what the vine dresser does. He prunes the grapes. And to our mind, it seems counterproductive to do less in order to do more. But actually, Jesus is saying, there's a spiritual secret here that if you create more space for me, and I would say that taking a Nazarite vow is like being a proactive pruner for the things of God. Oh, wow. It can That's always good. be like, God can cut some th things off, yeah, or you can be it. like, God, I'm gonna cut this off for you yeah. in order to be more fruitful yeah. for you. Yeah, and, and we want our lives to have fruit. Yeah fruit that remains. I mean, I, I think about John and how he was one that, you know, his life is really a great picture of what it means to be a Nazarite. He, he kind of let go of his legitimate pleasures to prepare the way for Jesus. I mean, that's incredible, you know, what God called him to do in his generation. Equally, God's calling us to prepare the way for a move of Jesus in our generation. So I believe there's a kind of lifestyle of consecration of letting go of these legitimate pleasures that we need to adopt so that Jesus can be seen in a greater measure through us. Yes, that's so key. And we talked earlier about how John the Baptist couldn't eat any grapes and then Jesus rocks up and John says, my life is to prepare the way for this guy. Yeah. What's the first thing Jesus does? It's almost so like he's rubbing it in the face of John the Baptist, being like, I can do what you can't do. But that's actually not what, not what is happening. Mm. What's happening is all the way through the Bible, they often talk about this thing called the new wine. And that's the first season of the, of the wine from the vineyard. And when the Bible's talking about the new wine, it's talking about the new covenant that God makes with his people. And this is so key to understanding what Nazarites are about and why you might want to be a Nazarite. Nazarites prepare the way for God to release a new wine. Wow. To release new wine in their lives, but also in their community lives. So maybe you're sat home, today and you want fresh wine in your life, spiritually speaking. You want like a new flow of God in your life. You want God to do something new in your life. Well, why don't you join us on the Nazarite challenge? Join with somebody else that you know and say, hey, why don't you just be a Nazarite with me for 30 days, download the app, go on the journey. And I can testify in my life and in James's life it's helped us to bear more fruit. Not because we're more spiritual, but because we're making more space for the Spirit of God to do something new in us. See you next time where we talk about the second part of the vow.